Hello, everybody, and welcome to a bonus edition of the Home Wrecker Podcast. I've already got peek and stitches over here. I don't even know what I did. <laughs> you don't have to do anything, hon. I am that funny, I guess. Apparently. You know what was funny is before when we were doing sound check and I, I said check, check, not into my microphone. So I don't know what I was thinking or what I was doing. It was like a foot away from me. Like, what? <laughs> and then I looked at him like, what am I doing? Okay. At Anyhow. Least you caught yourself. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's true. Yeah. Well, anybody, anyway, any anybody, what is wrong with me today? Should we just start over? No, no, let's keep going. My gosh. It's okay. Welcome to a bonus edition of the Home Record Podcast. Yes. I am the Golden Greek Alex Arion, joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing trophy wife, Monique. Hello. Hi. Hi. So we're uh, back again. Yes. We took a little break from the bonuses. We Yeah. We're living life. You know? Yeah, you know, just enjoying life. Yeah. Seclusion from the world. <laughs> like everyone Being else. Being normal. That is, as we normally do. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Nothing nothing's changed for Not us. Really. Really. Now last night or yesterday, we're recording this on uh, Today is the Tuesday, Tuesday the 28th I mean, of yes. April, and was it yesterday? It was yesterday, right? Yes, yesterday. To, to uh, We don't watch the news really, ever. A any kind of news that I get is if I occasionally check social media and I'll see something that somebody put a link to some kind of news story. Well, I saw that finally, after however long, the Pentagon came out and released and declassified and essentially admitted that there are, oh, I could use their term, unidentified aerial phenomena. AEPs. No. AEPs. A -E oh my gosh. Wow. You sure you don't want to start over? <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me. Not it's it's not me. just me. U wow. A P. U A P. Yeah. Fucking UFOs. Okay, we're just gonna call them UFOs because that's what they are. I I feel that's like what they've always been. They had to come out and change the wordage just to like kind of be like, oh no, well it's not that, it's this. The government being government D. So that's all. So what had happened was we're in bed and you happen to go on your phone on Twitter, and you're like, UFOs are trending? What the? Yeah, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and you look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, I saw people posting about it, but I wasn't paying attention. So I look at it, and I'm like, didn't this stuff come out like a couple years ago? And it was video that had come out a couple years ago, but now the Pentagon is releasing it. The, yeah. the Pentagon? Yeah. <laughs> just showing the ridiculousness of it. All right. And uh, so we were having a conversation, and I said last night, if I worked for the government and I was the one coming out to bring up this topic and say it's been released, I would call it a UFO. And but like the thing is, the like just it's unidentified, it's flying, and it's an object. So why do you have to change the wording? I feel like it's just to be difficult. I think we're, we're, we're missing the most important point of all of this, which is they finally disclosed that there are UFOs and that they're real. But it's not just swamp gas or weather balloons, as has been the government line for the last 50, 60, yeah. 70 years. They finally admitted they're real and nobody batted an eye. Nobody said boo about it. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. What? Like, little kid me, the little kid inside of me right now is going, yeah, they're real. I knew it. I knew it. They finally admitted it. It's finally happened. But it's But like, did they admit it? Because they didn't say UFOs. Yes, they the, They're using that terminology. They admit that the freaking things are, they don't know what they are. But they didn't so, say it was alien. So oh, it, it's... I feel, I don't know, I just, okay, I'll let you go and then I'll tell you what I think. They, 
We got we got disclosure. They didn't come out and say we've been talking to reptilian aliens and this. They didn't come out and say that. No, no. but they've admitted that there are UFOs, unidentified aerial front. What, bullshit. They're UFOs. They admitted it. They released video. They declassified a video that they have taken of these objects. So they've admitted it. That's disclosure. But they admit a lot of things that aren't true. And the point I'm trying to get to, and I know you're getting annoyed by me right now, but the reason why I'm saying that is because think about the disinformation. You are the missing put. my point entirely. I get your point, no, and I'm going you... over that. I I'm going beyond that because I wonder if it's something where it could be another country's aircraft, and they're just trying to put the spin to get us for something else going on. Or maybe it's their own for... aircraft that they're testing, but they've released it over time and come out because maybe it's maybe it's U.S. aircraft, but they're just saying that. I just don't trust anything they say. I don't I, trust their motives. So you look at it like a win. Like they've come out. They've I, no, no, said it, no, no. They've I, acknowledged it. I, I didn't say anything was a win. Okay. I said that they've acknowledged it, which... We finally got disclosure. We got, when I say we, I mean people that have been into UFOs and aliens and all this stuff. We got what we've been looking for all this time from the government, and it doesn't mean anything. That is my whole point. Okay. It's not a win. It's nothing like that. Okay, because you're just, making it sound like, yes, they... Yes, they've happened. admitted it. Yeah. It happened, but nobody cares. That's my thing. So, I guess, why has it been a secret for so long? Why was it held back for so long, and your point is that, well, because it's probably not, because it's the government, so I don't, I don't trust anything, which I'm on board with you there, but my point is they admitted it. They finally came out and said it, so, and nobody cares. Like, the world is just so... Desensitized. Doesn't care. Nobody cares. Like, we literally at this point, and this we've had this conversation too, we could literally have aliens, and I hate this saying, but I'm going to use it anyway, Land on the White House lawn. Yes, you rolled your eyes, and, and exactly, because we always hear that. Well, we're not going to know until they land on the White House lawn. Because fucking alien civilizations know that they need to land on the White House lawn. And what makes the United States of America that superb for an alien race to want to land? <laughs> yeah, like, what, this, we'd be where they selected to, to land. And, I, and, I feel like it's so egotistical it is, to of say course, that. Of course, but that's what, that's what everybody pictures because of just years of Hollywood programming and TV shows and stuff. That's what everybody thinks. But we've gotten the disclosure. We've gotten it from the government. It meant absolutely nothing. I mean, I, I saw there was a, a story of it on CNN. My brother sent me a, a link to it. Yeah. There was a, it was on ABC News. It was on all these things you see. I think you showed me a thing from USA Today. But really, I, I, nobody's, nobody's talking about it. From, from the best that I can tell, nobody really cares. I mean, people are it's talking a, about it, and they're story. like, oh, they said it, but people aren't running out in the streets panicking. No, it's not, it's not, it. it's not, exactly, it's not the panic that we were told forever, the reason they're not telling us is because the people were panicking, they couldn't handle it. Like, the, the line in Men in Black, when Tiger Lee Jones tells... Person, smart, and what is it like? People. People are dumb, panicky animals, or something like that. Well, I agree with that, yeah. still, I still agree with that, but it didn't happen in this case. But also, it's so, not like anyone saw aliens. They saw a craft that's unidentified flying. Right. So people might look at it and say, okay, but what if it is a U.S. craft? And they're just doing that. Because if you listen to the pilots, it was hard to make out everything they were saying. But they were having fun with it, and which is very possible. If you're seeing like UFOs, you might be like, and if it was alien, I'd be like, oh, okay, wow. But it wasn't like, what is this? Hey, we, we need to make a decision on anything. They were just enjoying having fun with it. So it's either they know about alien aircraft and they have some kind of relationship or it's their own craft. It, I, hey, I'm not ruling that out either. It could very well be. It could very well be. And these videos that they've declassified and released, they're not new. They've been out. They've been circulated. 2004. Yep. I think from 2004, the videos came out between 2004 and 2017. Yes. I believe. 
It was, I believe the New York Times did the story where they, they got this footage and they had a naval pilot. I think the naval pilot was actually on the Joe Rogan podcast too. And it's funny, you mentioned the things about our aircraft and, and pilots having fun. The pilot that was in one of those videos that was on the Rogan podcast told a story about how he used to mess with people when he would be flying his aircraft. I, and I apologize, I can't remember what type of aircraft he would fly. But he said that he could see... When he'd be flying out in the desert, he would see people that were camping or something like that, and he would just shut off his like uh, his engines, his, all his lights, and go down real low and close, and get real close, and then fire everything up and scare the shit out of everybody. He's like, so uh, he's he his words were, I'm sure people thought they saw a UFO when it was me just messing with them, having fun. So yeah, it, who knows? It could be their aircraft, and they're just this is they're just a, a way of pacifying people, I guess, or I, I don't know, who knows? I just think of... Everything with the government is an agenda, so yes. who knows why this is now... What is out. their agenda? Why have they said what they said? Why have they officially come out with the Pentagon, and why are they wording it that way? That's what I want to know. What, what What are your thoughts? What do you think? Because you said you had something yeah. you were going to work the podcast to tell me. Well, yeah, that's it. I think that I don't think they're necessarily... I think they're using the wording they're using for a specific reason, and I don't think it's an alien spaceship or craft. I think it's probably our own, or maybe in other countries, and they're releasing it. Like what? I feel like there's another agenda. There's something else going on. I just feel like with all of the disinformation that they have put out over the years with their own crafts and telling people, oh, you know, like the, there have been people, um, who have worked for the government being the source, the inside source, leaking well, information that's the, that's out. that's their job is to be exactly. disinformation. Yeah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you can't trust anything. Oh. And so if they're going to flat out say, oh, yeah, we're recognizing this and we don't know what it is, okay, what's their agenda? Yeah, What? What's why is this being released now? Exactly. After all these years, why is it being released now? What is the? What are they covering up? What are they trying to distract from? That's usually where I go to is they release this, they, oh, they want the attention here because they're doing something over here. It's a misdirection, in my view. I, it could, I, I don't know, obviously. It's, it's impossible to say that anything that comes from them is, is accurate or true because there's always an agenda. What that is in this case, I don't know. Maybe they're actually telling the truth for once. It could be. I don't know. I doubt it. I'm but very skeptical. But even with that, it's so sad because if they were telling the truth and they just want everyone to be on the same page, it's like the boy who cried wolf. You put out right. so many, you know, lies that, and yeah, there's some truth in their lies, but you put out too many lies and nobody's going to believe you anymore. Right. And, and as you mentioned that, there's some truth in it. We watched a documentary last night mm -hmm. from uh, 2014, I believe called Mirage Men, which focused, essentially it was about this this kind of thing, government disinformation. And the subject of this documentary was a guy by the name of Richard Doty, mm -hmm. who anybody that's followed ufology or UFOs or aliens and, the, and this kind of stuff and conspiracies ha has heard that name, most likely, because he's been involved in a lot of stories that have come up that became pretty famous. And he essentially was lying about most of it, or steering people to believe a certain thing to get them to not look, basically doing what a gov what the government does. They, they release something to get you to look over here as they're doing something over there. But it made sense, because he's explaining, like, this is classified government testing we're doing. Yeah. We can't have people know about what, we're, what we have and what we're doing, because then we don't have any advantage over any enemies of our country. So it makes sense. But at the same time, it's like when you spin it that way, it, it, you could just say, sorry, it's classified, leave it alone. But when you start putting out other information, I don't know, it's like... Well, the way he explained it, going back to how we led into this to begin with, they will give information to people to get them to look a certain way mm -hmm. in order to make, the inf to make what they're saying believable, they will give will say 80% BS and 20% actually factual stuff. So they're not giving you all lies, they're giving you some truth so that if you do follow up on things, you can say, oh wait, yeah, this is true, this is accurate. So that the, the thinking and the logic behind it is so that you can 
say, well, if this is true, then the rest of it must be true, too. So they do put out factual information. It's just... Surrounded in lies. It's, you just have to discern what's accurate and what's not. What's real, what's not. What's a lie, what's the truth. So good luck with that. Good luck. Especially when 80% of it is lies. Good luck figuring out what 20% of it is true. And he did say that a lot of times the 20% that is true is also the most extraordinary. So take that, take that what you will. I, I don't know. It, yeah, it, it just makes it hard to trust what they're saying. But again, this is coming from a government disinformation agent. His job is to lie but and now steer you so in the, here's the, the thing, wrong he's direction. He's like, I'm a civilian. He's given his own thoughts and yeah. saying stuff. But it's like, I'm like, I don't, I don't trust that. I don't trust it's any like, of the guys. Are you that. really a civilian? Because maybe like that's your cover. But I don't know. I just yeah. part of it's kind of fun, just watching it and trying to like think and work it out. Like, what is true? What is not? But I think that I don't know. There's something that's just. It's really sad you because kinda, like, there have been people who have been driven mad, literally mad, right. by this. Yeah, the, the Paul Benowitz story, mm -hmm. which is uh, another thing that he's famous for. He basically drove a, a respected businessman, a yeah, was brilliant a businessman. Yeah. He drove him insane, like literally insane. The guy was in the nut house because he thought that aliens were here to take over the world and mm -hmm. were plotting against the government and... The, this guy steered him in that direction. And and it was all because well, the story was Benowitz saw some secret military aircraft, didn't know what he saw, reported it, being a good citizen, reported it to the Air Force because he was looking out overlooking at a mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And he saw this, he filmed it, and then he brought it to the Air Force and thinking he's doing something patriotic and helping his country, and his country decided to drive him crazy. Because he saw, but not just aircraft. that. He was like, because he did stuff um, with like yeah, audio had, equipment, and he was trying to pick yeah. up. He was audio trying to pick up, yeah, he was trying to pick up the radio because there was a base like, that, like yeah. next to him, so yeah. he was trying to pick up radio signals from that. Which eh, that's probably going to get you in trouble <laughs> trying to listen I mean, to like military radio. Right. Signals. I mean, I'm not. I'm not defending what the guy did as being right or wrong. No. Not saying that, but he was doing some stuff that would get you in trouble. But then, like I said, he, when he went to the Air Force with what he had, they, rather than, you know, bring the guy into the fold, and that's the thing, the guy was a genius, and his business was, he, he would provide he equipment, like equipment for, Na for yeah, NASA. NASA. So it's like he was kind of working with the government in other capacities. Why not just bring the guy into the fold and just tell him, no, you actually saw this, you signed this non-disclosure, and, you know, be on your merry way. We're doing testing with equipment. This is what we do here. We, we fly experimental craft, whatever. Yeah. No, instead they send Richard Doty and assign Richard Doty to the guy to keep an eye on him and monitor him and steer him in another direction. So, I just had a thought. What? What if Rick Doty was actually telling the truth about everything, but that was his thing to come out and say, oh, I was giving out disinformation. But it was all true. So we don't know who to trust or believe. Okay. I'm just saying, it's this, like, web that just keeps, like, Yeah, moving. well, that's the thing. It's so deceptive. It's yes. like It's, it, like, it's, it's mad. It's kind of, like, genius and brilliant. But it's, it's brilliant yeah. because it'll drive you, ins it will drive you insane if you just keep on it like it did for Paul Benowitz. So, yeah, it, it was just, it's just, it's crazy yeah. what happened to that guy. And, yeah, he ended up losing his business. He, I, I don't believe that Edwards is with us anymore. I think he passed away, but he spent a long time in a mental institution because his family was worried for his safety. He was to the point where he said that aliens were coming into his house and injecting him and making him and drive. And he injection marks. That's too. the weird part, yeah, and that's the, that's the part that's weird. So. Who was injecting him? But also, wasn't like the NSA getting involved and the Air Force didn't even know about it? Yeah. So, allegedly? Uh, yeah, allegedly. So you don't know how many other people are jumping in We could do this. an episode on the Benowitz thing another time. Oh, yeah. Because it's a, it's a whole other story in of itself. It's, it's pretty, there's a lot of weird, unexplained stuff in there. But so. I can see, like, one part not knowing what the other parts are doing because well, in a way like it's not like well, they're, they're different government agencies exactly yeah, that's what i'm saying it's like not like they have to communicate with each other yeah so 
I could see that making sense, but like, okay, well, why are they giving him injections and you drive out to the desert? I mean, this guy was flying his planes overhead, uh, like different areas, trying to point out like, oh, this is where a UFO crashed, and he's doing all this stuff. Well, they were, yeah, they, they were showing, like, I mean, I, I, we'll get off Ben Woods in a second, yeah. but they were showing how he would take pictures of things from his airplane and say, this is a crashed airplane, and he would circle it and send it to friends. And his friends would look at the picture and be like, I, I don't see anything. Like, what are you seeing? But even, was, even, even though it's circled. But the Air Force was like, oh yeah, you know, keep to yourself. Yeah, and, the Air like, Force is sitting there along. stringing them along telling them, yeah, you're on the, you're onto something, you're onto something. Keep, keep telling us what you're finding, you're onto something, you're onto something. So yeah, they essentially drove the guy crazy. But they, that's what they would do to people. They'd find people who were, had a good reputation, who people would listen to. And they'd slip their information in that they wanted people to know, saying right. people will listen to this guy or, or this woman. And then they'd be like, we're going to give you something, but you got to give us stuff. Because they wanted to know, you know, what other people were saying about it. Yeah, they, they, uh, Bill Moore was one of the guys that they got. Uh, he was a guy who wrote the first book on the Roswell UFO incident back in, I believe it was 1978. Uh, and he, he wrote that book. It was very well researched. It was a great book. And Doty got him essentially to work with him on the Benowitz thing um, by promising that he would give him information, you know, top secret information about the UFO subject. So they were, I mean, that, that was Doty's job. Now, how many other Doties are there, right? How, we, we've, we've had a show on the men in black. He essentially was a man in black, but he just wasn't wearing black. You know? But that's essentially what his job was. He, his job was to infiltrate the UFO community, whatever that is, people like that are in, interested in UFOs, and find out what, what they knew, what they were researching, and give, feed them stories. Give them stories. Give them stuff to talk about. It makes you wonder... All the books you read, all these respected people that you've listened to who had inside sources, how much of it was bullshit? I'm inclined to say a lot of it was, mm -hmm. if not most of it. I mean, there's obviously kernels of truth that are sprinkled in here and there. I mean, you, you can't discount somebody's eyewitness account of something. I, I mean, a government person could come and tell me something and, you know, I've had a personal experience where I've seen something. They're not going to tell me that I didn't see what I thought I saw. They're not going to come and tell you that you didn't see what you thought you saw. We know there are people that have seen things. There are people that have experienced things, allegedly. So we know that there are reputable people that have seen things, experienced things. People have video footage. There, there's stuff out there. There's evidence. It's a lot of the stories that have come out that I question now. A lot of the stories that have come from inside sources mm -hmm. and government sources, like... This book that I got was actually from somebody who was in the military, Robert M. Collins. The book's called Exempt from Disclosure. And it also was written with Richard C. Doty, right at the bottom. I even got this son of a bitch signed. Look at this. Got, got, got my name in there. All the, all the best to Alex. Robert M. Collins. January 29th, 2008. You probably can't see this. I'm holding this up for the camera. They probably can't For those see listening, too. But anybody, for those listening, that's what I'm doing. So I read that book. I was so excited when I got that book. So I'm like, oh man, we've got a former government insider. Holy cow! It's Richard Doty. He was he was a special for you know uh, special, special operator, or whatever whatever his name was, whatever his title was. Like this is awesome. This has got to be legit. It's all a bunch of bullshit. It's all bullshit. I mean, they even got a picture of the alien that they said that they had in captivity that they've been talking to and learning from and getting technology and all this information from. It's all bullshit. I, you can't, I can't believe any of it because it's, it's like the whole, I gave you this analogy earlier, it's like the whole coronavirus thing. If they lie about one death, then you've got to question all of them. If they lie about one thing, you've got to question the, the validity of everything. And that happens with people in general where you believe them, they have no reason to lie, and then all of a sudden they start, they lie about something and it makes you question, and they might have yeah. been telling the truth with the other stuff, but you have to question it all yeah it, it, it sucks because I, I was <laughs> we were having this talk earlier now I, I question literally every single thing I've ever believed or thought anything I've read I now I question it like why was I why was I 
into this? <laughs> why, why did I think this? Why did I believe it? Was it all a lie? And I think sometimes you kind of have to go with your gut on it um, and not overthink everything. Do I think aliens is, exist? Absolutely. But I question our government's relationship with them. And I question what our government says about them. Agreed. Agreed. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't buy anything that comes from them because they've given me no reason to believe them. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So check out Mirage Men if yes. you want. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, and we will. We'll definitely we'll do a, a Benowitz show because there's a lot there that was not talked about in the movie that's in the book. There's a great book that was written about it. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do a show about that sometime in the future. Um, so your thoughts on the Pentagon releasing this video, acknowledging it? I already said how I feel. How do you feel? I, I feel like wow, we got disclosure. Finally happened. But no one cares, so I guess why should I? <laughs> because it really, it, it, that's, that's my thought. I, I, mean, I think people care. I mean, it was trending on Twitter, so obviously I, what does that somebody mean? Cares. So cares. True. What does that mean? <laughs> but what I'm saying is people are talking about it, but when it comes down to it, we've said it multiple times with multiple different things. At the end of the day, how does this change my life? How does it affect me? Okay. Ships are flying around and you're saying you don't know what it is and it's not swamp gas and it's not this or that or weather balloons. Balloon. Okay, that's great. But how is this going to affect me? When aliens start showing up on my front porch, okay, then I'll start making a plan about it. But otherwise, I, I don't know. It just, it, it's not affecting me. Which is, again, why it, it makes you wonder why do they... Why did they keep this under wraps for so long anyway? And why, yeah, why, are they, why are they releasing it now? What is their ulterior motive? Like, what is their agenda? What are they trying to do? Yeah. I, I almost am, I've, I've said this to you in the past, I haven't brought this up in a while, but I almost think that they're getting us ready for the alien invasion that is inevitably, inev that can talk, inevitably going to happen in order to unite us as one world. So we can have a one world globalism and a new world order. And that, I mean, it sounds crazy, but did you ever think the whole fucking world would shut down? Why are they shutting down countries <laughs> that have like no cases? Well, did what you ever think any of this would happen? I think this is all a test. This is all just to see what, what can we get away with to usher in what we want. And I mean, Reagan said it back when he was president. It would take something out of this world to unite all nations as one world in order to combat a foe. They've, they've done it in Hollywood with the whole Independence Day. You saw the world come together to fight those aliens. And everyone what? was happy and thriving of course. because of it. They were better. Of course. You've got people now. We're all in this together. Shut up. That pisses me off so much when I hear that. But think about it. Is that what's going on now? Are we slow rolling this out so that we can maybe get to the point where we are, we're going to have that alien invasion. It's not going to happen in our front yard. Is but it it's going to happen on TV where everybody's watching. Or it might not be an invasion, but it might be a, these are our creators and we need to listen to them kind of thing. And they're going to be in charge. They'll pick and choose who we listen to, per se, but they're going to be creating the one world government, the globalism, because uh -huh. they want us to say, these are our creators, and, you know, they've elected us, you know, the, the powers that be. The, the Pope, yeah. the President, the United Nations. And all those little underground clubs. Right. We need to listen to them. We need to all, you know, be as one and follow their rules. So if they don't want us to have guns anymore, we need to follow their rules. If, you know what I mean? Like whatever it is that they want to control us on right now, they'll use that uh, absolutely as all the way how. So it doesn't control. necessarily mean it's going to be an invasion and we have to all work together to fight against this. It could very easily be something of no, no, no. Like, these you're guys right. are great, and they're peaceful, and, you know, everyone drinks the Kool-Aid of what it is, but 
don't, I don't know. trust it. I won't trust anything. Question everything. I, that's all. Yes. So I think that yes. It, well, whether it's an alien invasion, whether it's here's our real creators, whatever. The Anunnaki it is, is coming down. What, whenever, however it gets rolled out, I think this is what this is. This is a slow rollout for that. Mm -hmm. It's to get people again slowly conditioned, as they've been doing for years and years with television and movies, and it's it's kind of worked because look, they came out and said it, and nobody really batted an eye, nobody cared because they're like, yeah, of course there is. We we've seen enough TV and movies to know that there is, yeah, because it was on TV and movies, so yeah, it's gotta be real, it's gotta be real. Yeah. We are living in interesting times, and they're about to get crazier in my view. Don't know a timeline, but I know that it's probably going to be happening sometime soon. So question everything, as always. Do your research. Don't always believe what you see on your TV. What you hear on podcasts. Exactly. Do your own research. Come up with your own beliefs you and thoughts. on Facebook and social media. Exactly. So, let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. Hit us up. We've got a Twitter account. At HomeworkerPod. Instagram. Homewrecker Podcast. And we've got a website too. Homewreckerpodcast.com. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Buy a shirt. Yes. Like this awesome one that I'm sporting right yes. now. Yes. Our family dinner. Our family dinner. Comfy, cozy. It is. And if you haven't already, go ahead on over to wherever you listen to your podcast. Hit the subscribe button. If you don't mind, leave us a five star rating. We really, truly appreciate it. It helps us to grow the show. And check us out on YouTube, mm -hmm. right to on, subscribe on all of those platforms Like as well. our videos, please. Please and thank you. It and helps get just more, it gets us out there more for more people to see. Yeah. And until next time. I am the Golden Greek, Alex Arion. I have been joined, as always, by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing, healthily skeptical wife, trophy wife. Ooh. And I just want to throw in there, I want to leave everything, but I just, you get the wool pulled over your eyes so many times, you just got to start questioning everything to protect yourself, that's all. It's not that I don't believe anything or anyone, it's just there are things that I can feel it and I believe it, but there are other things where it's like I need to question it. Just wanted to get that out there. My trophy wife, Monique. And you've been listening to the Homewrecker Podcast.